Hi, my name is Alex Kreis. I am one of the veterinarians at Bonorong Wildlife Hospital. In this video, I will show you how to anesthetize avian species. So birds have a very particular respiratory system, which makes them more prone to have complications during the anesthesia. One of the main um, differences between a bird and a mammal in that respect is that birds don't have a diaphragm. So they can stop breathing during the anesthesia at any moment. Another particular anatomical issue that we have with birds is that uh, the tracheal rings are complete. So when you introduce an endotracheal tube, you cannot inflate the tube. So the tubes have to be non-cuffed. And most of the time we will IPPV the birds throughout the procedure so that if they do stop breathing, they are being breathed for, for that procedure. And that's not unusual to happen. So once we have the bird contained, um, we will anesthetize with isoflurane. And um, we have a modified Jackson Reese circuit here, but any small animal uh, open circuit will be suitable for birds. So a circuit where we can um, open and close the valve and breathe IPPV uh, the bird, and most circuits you'll be able to do that and just use sort of like a, a, a bag that's of an appropriate size um, for, for, for the bird. So for the very small birds, use the smallest bag that you can. So we have the commercial masks, but we also can make masks with syringes and, um, and other uh, plastic bottles or, or anything to, to be suitable for the, for the species of bird that you are anesthetizing. So you just need this little piece to connect the syringe to the anesthetic machine. To anesthetize a pelican, uh, once we made a, a mask using two plastic bottles and that was suitable to anesthetize a large bird with such a big beak. So as long as it's of an appropriate size, you can just make as you go. So usually during the anesthesia, we will IPPV the, the birds throughout. So we do one breath every 15 seconds or so, even if they are breathing, just because uh, sometimes they can stop breathing with no warning. Once the bird is um, induced and relaxed, you can intubate. So we use just the normal, normal ET tubes without a cuff. And this is probably a tube that would be suitable for any large bird of an eagle size or, or so. And then we have like up to uh, two and a half uh, that would be suitable for a small avian species. These are the more specialized bird um, ET tubes. So these ones are made of silicone and they just go into the trachea up to there and then they have this step in there. They're really good for birds and they work really well. For smaller birds, uh, we have these ones that also are made of silicone, but they are even smaller and they have a guide inside. So just to make it a little bit more rigid. Um, so once we introduce the tube into the trachea, you can just remove the guide and connect to the anesthetic machine. So for any birds, but especially raptors, um, we always apply eye lube, so visco tears or artificial tears to the eyes at the beginning of the anesthesia. And we always use a, a source of heat. Uh, so that's very important to keep uh, the patient safe. So in our case, we have a bear hugger, but our a warm wet bag uh, or any other source of heat would be suitable. So in terms of monitoring the anesthesia, still one of the most important um, pieces of equipment is the stethoscope. 
just to check the heart rate that's uh, constant or, or whatever is, is, is happening, that's pretty important. If we are doing surgery and the animal is under drapes and we cannot use the normal stethoscope, we use um, esophageal stethoscopes. So we just um, connect them to a normal uh, stethoscope piece and introduce the esophageal stethoscope into the esophagus and we just check where is the best place to hear clearer. When the animal is recovering from anesthesia, that is um, when they start moving their head and becoming alert, we tend to recover them in a warm environment, such as in a humidity crib. So um, we put them in a donut towel, place them in the humidity crib with um, the keel on the towel, and we leave them there until they are bright and alert for five or 10 minutes, and then they are ready to go back to the enclosure where they are being housed.